Good morning, everybody. We're going to be driving Cadiz Road today. It's a 50 mile dirt road through the Mojave Desert. We're starting out at Parker, Arizona this morning. Our first stop is going to be at the old town of Rice, formerly known as Blythe Junction. It's been described as a rough and tumble town. It offered all the usual vices to the travelers passing through, liquor, women of low morals, and gambling. Train passengers who didn't spend all their money on such vices were frequently robbed of what they had left. The Santa Fe Railroad began to complain about Rice Junction. On Monday, March 30th at 1 a.m., Riverside County, San Bernardino County sheriffs, five deputies, plus a number of railroad officers responded to the town and arrested 13 residents. That included everyone in the town except one man who got away. During the raid, they discovered that one of the best stocked bars in Southern California was under the post office. The only thing that remains here is the famous rice shoe fence and an unmanned railroad siding. This is a lot of artwork that somebody sprayed out here. This is the shoe tree. This is probably the largest shoe tree I've ever seen. To round off the fun, we discovered a face mask tree and a panty tree have also been added to the location. What'd you find there, Bobby? I found a panty tree. Did you? <laughs> what? A panty tree. Yeah. I remember those. <laughs> This is the start of Cadiz Road. No desert trail would be complete without an old abandoned car used for target practice. The path we'll be traveling on Cadiz Road follows a stretch of the Arizona and California Railway. In 1883, the Atlantic and Pacific constructed the line through Cadiz. It eventually merged with the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. The first town we come to is the town of Milligan. In the 1930s, the Lucky Jim mine that was near here produced silver copper ore. It was loaded at the siding on the Arizona and California Railroad and taken to Douglas, Arizona for smelting. There's the loading dock. We're going to do some exploring here. What do you see? I don't know. I'm looking for, you know, anything. Okay. I see a loading dock over here. Okay. I see the cemetery over there. Do you? Oh, okay. I'm going to go over and check out the cemetery. Here's the cemetery for Milligan. Very small cemetery. Looks like all the names are gone off of the crosses except for this one back here. There's a name on this one here. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm just sec. I want to see how we can do this. Yep, big magnet. We stopped to watch some maintenance. I was fascinated at watching the huge magnet offloading the metal debris from the truck.
We made it to the town of Chubbuck. So we're all going to get out here and explore. Chubbuck was named after Charles Chubbuck. He was a man who purchased a 1,600-acre mining claim out here. Because of the area was rich in lime, he was in the cement business, and it was perfect for him to make his cement. This mine ended up closing after a newer lime mixture became popular called Miracle Lime. And the patent on it made it impossible for Charles to compete with. So his mine ended up closing down. Looking now, it's hard to believe that there used to be a store, a post office, and a school here. This looks like the explosives building here. You can see, barely see the writing on the side of the wall here. Take a look inside. Make sure there's nothing in here. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty desolate out here. I think, I think I'm gonna go over this way and see. I'm gonna go over here and check this out over here. Some of the remainders out here now, it seems like people just use for target practice. There is a lot of ruins out here at Chubbuck. A lot of foundations here too. These look like they're maybe some kind of water tanks, holding tanks, I don't know. There's a bicycle down there. It's pretty deep. So I'm not sure what this is. Um, let's go around the other way. That didn't look very safe. Let's see. I'll try and get a shot on the other side. junk down there. A lot of ruins out here though. Interesting. So I was walking along the tracks over here and right beside the tracks it looks like there's some really old ties, railroad yes. ties. Is that, what is that? From? That was the siding for Chubbrick. Okay. When they redid the tracks and stuff, since the town isn't here, they took out the switches okay. so they don't have to worry about it. And they've also taken down the station side. Okay. Or the siding side, I should say. Okay, so those used to be the old tracks. Yeah, then. they're okay. on this side. Yeah. They're on our side. Right, yeah. right. Okay, thank you. Very good. 
This looks like a little cabin of some kind out here. Make sure that it is not inhabited, but and that there's no animals in here. It is creepy. Very interesting, though. Come in here and look. I, I will. This is I cool. Just want you to make sure it's safe for you. It is. It's, but it doesn't look like it's been that long since somebody's been in here. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like somebody just kind of made this makeshift cabin yep. out here. Very cool. And here's uh looks like they do target practice out here. We've got a little makeshift shooting range. We're still looking around at Chubbuck. And this would be where the narrow gauge railroad once was. So we're gonna check out and see if there's anything out here. Looks like just canned dumps. Maybe a bunch of broken glass. I was going to ask you, why is it that they did the narrow gauge railroad? It's choice. Um, it's less expensive to build and run. Oh, okay. And you don't have to have quite as wide as a right of way. Okay. The okay. only problem with it is, is you can't interchange it with the railroad that was there. Okay. So it has to be offloaded and then reloaded into cars that are standard gauge. Oh, okay. Interesting. Thank you. From here, the road is a little washed out and sandy in places. So I would say high clearance vehicle is necessary. We also used our four wheel drive, but our friend who followed us didn't need it. Next is the town of Cadiz, founded in 1883 by Louis Kingman, who was an engineer for the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad. In 600 feet, turn left onto Cadiz Road. The end of Cadiz Road is at the sign for the Route 66 and Chambliss sign. Used to be known as Chambliss Station, James Albert Chambliss settled here in the 1920s. In the 1930s, James married Fanny Gould. She turned Chambliss into what some refer to as a desert oasis. Here's some video of the old motel buildings nicknamed Chambliss Camp. And here are the remains of the office, town store, and service station building. The front of the gas station and store had a large porch. During World War II, Fanny made lemonade and served it to the many soldiers who stopped along their way for desert training in the area. Possibly as many as two million soldiers passed through here during the war. The town died out when Interstate 40 bypassed it in 1973. Between Route 66 and Cadiz Road is a historical marker. A short distance away is the Roadrunner Retreat. There's a nice historical marker here for the Roadrunner's Retreat. 
Years ago, there was some restoration in progress and talk of plans to relight the neon sign, but that was before Route 66 washed out in the area and closed. Including all the exploring that we did from Rice down Cadiz Road, ending in Chambliss, it took us about six hours. From here, we took Kel Baker Road to I-40. We'll be spending the night in Laughlin before heading home in the morning. We'll catch up with you guys later. Bye. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. Everything here At least to stay alive And the time that we share Makes it all worthwhile